Does anybody have a question in the crowd? You have a question. I want you to begin to write. It's a question. A question. Rise. Your question. I don't know who to direct it to. She has a question. Just get up so that they can see you quickly. All right. We are talking about a man who um, probably um, he's, he's starting. He, he, he has a focus with vision and everything. But then he's not as, um, you know, he doesn't have it like materially. Mm -hmm. And then you're meant to follow him. You're meant to follow his dream. How, and sometimes it can be discouraging like, okay, we're well, really not seeing the real stuff. But then how do you hold on seeing this dream, you know, you're, you're following up? How do you hold on? I'm going to direct this question to a woman that I know has held on. Okay, Pastor Dockers, how do you hold on? Because I remember, <laughs> should I say it or I should not say it? I should not. I will say it, Joe. I have the mic. There's one boy scutter. Is that they used to say they live in Ikoi, but it's a boy scutter. You know, there's Ikoi front and Ikoi back house. And when I knew they were living in Ikoi back house, but the story has changed. They now have how many front houses? How did you hold on? Praise God. Hallelujah. It's not easy holding on. To what I like that truthfulness. Give her a hand. It's not easy. But um, faith and patience. Faith and patience. And then you have to believe in the man that you marry. Believe in the man. Which means if you cannot believe in the man, do not marry him. Is there a question in the crowd? You can write down your question. Let them take it from the paper. Because I'm going to yet another topic, which is very important. And time has just, you know. Uh, there is a question there. Is that a woman's hand I see? Rise. If you rise, then they will see you. Come on, we're young. If you're not below, oh, if you're not above 70, rise. Thank Praise you. Praise the Lord. Thank you. My question is, what of a situation that one encounter a man that fears God and is faithful to God. But within a space of 10 years, he changed. <laughs> I've Every, seen people come with Not as in financial alone, mm -hmm. but even as in God himself, everything. How does that woman continue? So Thank are you me. saying the man backslides? He's no longer in faith. If it were only backslide, it would have been better. <laughs> because he's neither here nor there. Thank you. All right, he you too. She says, you marry a man, and it was all good in the beginning. He fed God. Everything was good financially. But 10 years later, he has backsliding. Of course, she did not add the financially, but maybe the financial want to backslid. She said, if it was only backslides, we would be glad. What do you do? Well, in this uh, situation, you have to resort to prayers. Pray, pray, pray for your man. It's not easy. There are so many temptations, so many assaults here and there. If you look at the history, probably if you look back, how did it start? Maybe along the way, the, the distraction came in. Maybe along the way, the, there was no focus on the faith. Maybe uh, family pr uh, prayers, family life, got so many distractions came in and the man backslid it. So the wife, a, a real wife, will stand by her man, pray for him fervently, and by the special grace of God, he will get back his faith. Just to add to that, I think there's also a place for counseling, which is why it's good for you to go to church, both of you to be in the faith, and you're part of a living church. Um, there is a can question. I, can I just add yes. something? If the life of the woman is threatened in that relationship, mm -hmm then she has a right to leave that home. If the man is into occultism because he didn't tell us the rest of the story and her life is threatened, then she has a right to leave that home and then not to be divorced so that her life is saved. We've had situations whereby husbands or wives, very extreme cases, they went into all sorts of evil things and pastors kept on counseling the wife, the wife to stay and pray until the husband killed her. So if you get to certain points in the relationship and your life is threatened, please pack your loads and leave the house. So That's my counsel. He's saying there's counsel. a place for a temporary separation while a resolution is being worked on. Because he said not divorce, not divorce. So I don't want people to leave here and say, well, they told us in where are the real men that if a man cannot afford a Chanel bag, we can divorce him. 
<laughs> That's not what we said. Okay, there is a question that I have here, you know, that came in here. And I will ask it, everybody will answer. If you marry a guy and you find out later that he's impotent, what do you do? Two cases. Ah. Some sisters were, eh? <laughs> eh? <laughs> what do you do? Do you stay? Do you leave? Eh. I'm coming to you first because of the way you're looking. Short, short answer. Um, short answer to that. <laughs> short answers. <laughs> so we can take all these scenarios. Hello? Hello? Let me have your attention, please. I, I think it's a, bit, it's a very interesting question. It's an question. exciting question. It's a very right? exciting question. Um, I think we understand clearly that marriage is for life. We, we took an oath, we said, for good and for what? And life and what? I wanted the person goes to be with the Lord. Um, men generally have seasons in their lives about sex. I, I'm, we haven't got, got into that yet, right? But if the man is important, you didn't marry him as an important person. You've got to wait and trust God until the Lord heals him. That's, that's my answer. Okay, that's his answer. I will give yet another question that came. So they said, I married this guy. This is not that he became impotent. And I found out that he's impotent. We've been married for one and a half years. He has not been able to touch me. Dr. Akali, what do I do? You know, you're a doctor, pharmacy. Well, um, that means Viagra is no help. Yes, pain. yes. Uh, from the beginning, if the man was um, deceitful, because uh, if the man knows that he's important and goes ahead to marry a wife, I think um, to some extent, there are some reasonable ground to give a little separation. But there is also space for proper medical investigation. What is the cause of this importance? Can it be treated? And then we continue okay, with Okay, it can be treated. If it can be treated, and it was not a... Dis I, mean, if it, I mean, the man knows very well that he is, he is um, important and goes ahead to marry, I think it's, 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 it's a bad, very bad case. <laughs> no, no, we haven't this. I'm coming. Pastor Ken, I say you're raring to go, but I'm coming. Your own question is yeah. a modification of that. Yeah. Dr. Akali has not really told us what. He said, go and treat it. And then um, we'll take it on a case-by-case -case level. Let, let me give you a way of escape. Let's, then we'll take it case-by-case. -case. Okay. They should see you later. In case after he's been treated and it does not work, you see, you'll be on the first row. Now, Pastor Ken, this is your own, or Beres, let me call Beres, Ken, this is your own question. All right. Since these kind of things happen, how can we forestall it from happening and still not have sex before marriage? Okay. Can we test? Somebody said test. Test how? You, you see, I mean, me, I know. I've been at this thing for a long time. It's you pastors that they cannot tell. Give her a hand, clap for her. It's good to say what is inside you. This is not church now. Okay. Is a short answer. Okay, um, even though the answer, I'll try and make it short. Section 15 of the Matrimonial Causes Act. Give him a hand. Gives, uh, the law, the law, my uh, learned colleague. Gives us Section. about seven, seven uh, situations, A to G, mm. uh, whereby the marriage can be nullified ab initio. So that solemnization without consummation is grounds for nullification. If he cannot consummate, then you have every right to file for nullification, not divorce. Nullification means that the court would say the marriage never happened. However, there is a real-life situation that happened at the redemption camp of a young woman who was in love with this Christian guy. And after a while, the Christian guy said, I need to disclose to you, I am impotent. 
I know people love me because of my money, because the guy was well to do. But he said, I've come to love you sincerely that I will not deceive you. I am impotent. And the lady's reply was this, I have prayed severally concerning our relationship. And I know it is the will of God for me to marry you. God also told me that I will have children, my quiver shall be full of them. The, uh, the, 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 the paradox will be resolved at the altar of God's miracle working power. Year one, no erection. Year two, no erection. Year three, no erection. After the third year, they were at the miracle uh, service with Adeboye. When Baba stood up in his characteristic manner and said, uh, Daddy just told me there is somebody here... Uh, you've been married, but you have not been able to fulfill your role as a husband. The power of God is healing you right now. And then suddenly there was um, a rumble at the backside. The guy ran to the pulpit with a Magnum 49 <laughs> shooting out from his pocket. And I his warned wife, you, Pastor Ken, I'll switch off the mic. I, I warned you. I told you children are here. I said, pistol, gone, gone, pistol, gone. Pistol, okay. Okay. It's my own mind that it's not clean, no. that I'm hearing things. It's okay. With his wife right no, beside man, him okay. and giving glory to God. What am I saying? If you do not make the disclosure, you have defrauded. It will become grounds for nullity. But if you make the disclosure, there is a miracle working grace in our God. He has already even answered the question very well, which is, there is no testing... If you he did not know there was anything wrong with him and went into it and it happened, you pray because it could, something could happen to you too. I don't know. Something could happen to you too. So we're coming to this. Where, where marriage is not a contract. It's a covenant. So boys cannot get married. Girls cannot get married. It's a lifelong contract.